This is Katrin with Disability Rights New York. Welcome to our podcast, Empire State of Rights Closed Captioned. We are here to bring you information on the most relevant topics regarding disability rights and advocacy. As New York State continues to address the coronavirus pandemic, Disability Rights New York will be recording podcasts specifically targeted at bringing you up-to-date information and resources. We will do our best to get you information as it changes. If there is a topic you would like us to address, please comment below or email us at podcast at drny.org. Today, we welcome DRNY staff attorney Jennifer Feely to discuss how to access special education during the coronavirus pandemic. Jennifer, how are you doing today? Hi, Katrin. Uh, I'm well. Thank you for having me. So special education has been in the news as soon as we went online with education and New York State is looking at how are we addressing online learning, uh, remote learning, distance learning. There's a lot of different terms that people are using to address it. And along with this is coming a whole other topic, which is how are we addressing special education? And so let's start by talking about distance learning, and that's what we'll call it for this podcast. How's it being used in New York State right now during the COVID-19 pandemic? So distance learning, as you mentioned, is the phrase that, you know, you're really hearing. And districts are reaching out to parents and families to try and provide distance learning while kids are not able, the students are not able to come into the schools. So we see this in a variety of ways. A lot of it is through electronic means, providing parents with access to um, materials, via email, through the internet, on the school's website. Um, Google Classroom is something that a lot of teachers are using, providing uh, day-to-day breakdowns of lessons that parents can be doing with their students during the day. That's driven by the teachers, so the teachers themselves are working on all of these materials and then uploading them and providing them over to the parents and the students. And so are students still entitled to special education services while schools are closed? Yes. So the laws protecting the rights of special education students, such as the Individuals with Disabilities Act, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act, you'll just often hear those referred to as the IDEA or Section 504, and the Americans with Disabilities Act or the ADA still apply during this time. Uh, School districts are still required to provide students with, you know, what we call a free and appropriate public education under these circumstances. But if a school district is not providing any distance learning to the general education population, they're not then required to do so for students receiving special education. That said, districts should be providing the distance learning as best as they can to everybody. and complying with the rights of special education students as well. Important distinction there. There are some schools that are not set up right now to be doing distance learning, is that correct? So I can't speak to every district, but you know there has been a lag naturally in terms of being able to get everything up and running. So I know some of what we'll talk about a little bit too is you know districts are trying to do their best to make sure that all students have access to the technology that they need, that teachers have enough time to prepare lessons and materials. So there has been somewhat of a lag, you know, in terms of districts maybe being able to get up and running. I think as now we're getting into additional weeks of this, we're starting to see more and more districts really roll out as best they can, you know, more set schedules in terms of the learning. Right. And I think the lag also probably has to do with the fact that we didn't know how long this was going to last. If this was going to be a two week interruption in the regular school year that people may not have made the same decisions or districts may not have made the same decisions as they have. But clearly this is going to go on for longer than the two weeks. So I'm guessing districts are really looking at reevaluating their plans. And so if you are a parent uh, or a caregiver who needs your child to have special education services, what should they be receiving at this time? What should those parents and caregivers be looking for? Yeah, so, you know, and I think what's important to also add in there is, you know, one thing that was mentioned in a lot of the guidance that parents might be seeing online at state education and things like that, and in terms of thinking about what they should be receiving is this is a flexible thing, right? There's a lot of flexibility to it right now because this is something that we've never seen before. So it's really about districts and parents really coming together to try and work together during this time and the understanding that there is going to be flexibility and it might not be feasible for a district to safely provide 
certain services. So there may be parents whose children are not necessarily able to receive all of the services. But what we are seeing, what districts can do and what parents can do is there's certainly many accommodations and modifications that can easily still be taking place during distance learning. So for example, students that have extended time, they can still have extended time on their assignments. Um, if videos are being provided, they can be provided either with captioning you know, or sign language if that's available. Reading materials can be made sure that they're being offered in an accessible format. Depending on the needs of the students, one word that parents and students out there might be hearing a lot of is teletherapy, which means, you know, again, going back to these online or video conferencing or phone conferencing type of services. So related services might be something such as counseling or speech therapy that parents and districts might be able to set up through video conferencing or perhaps a phone call. Curriculum can still be modified as it needs to be to meet the individual's needs if there's any modification of a student's curriculum. Um, and even, let's say, direct instruction from a special education teacher for short periods of the day might be a substitute, for, let's say, for students that have resource room on their IEPs. So, Jennifer, we just talked about a lot of ways that school districts are going to try and accommodate with distance learning and telehealth and a lot of online services what are we going to do about students who don't have access to technology if their only way to get this instruction is through technology like a laptop or even internet service what do we do if those students don't have access so parents and students should be working on communication with the district what districts are doing is they're really rolling out ways to provide laptops or chromebooks for the students um, that can vary from district to district again. Um, so definitely be in communication with your local school district. You know, it could be that they're doing pickups on specific days based on, you know, a, a last name. You know, some districts obviously you may need to contact them specifically. They may have sent out communication asking for information on people that need the Chromebook so they know how many that they need to provide to students. And, you know, you certainly should feel even if you have a laptop at home, speak with your district about whether or not you still need a Chromebook, let's say for your child, because many of us are working at home during this time too, and one laptop may not be enough, you know, to meet the needs of the parents and all of the, the children that are living in that household. Right. In case someone needs to be sharing a laptop or if there's multiple children and spouses in the house that need to use one laptop, clearly there would be a need for another piece of equipment. We just talked a lot about communication and communicating with your district. What do we do if English is not the primary student's or family's language? Is there a requirement for schools that are sending information out that it comes out in other languages? So there's always an ongoing conversation about parents having, you know, the right or the need to receive information and communicate with the school district um, in their native language. So if um, a parent's native language is something other than English, you should definitely be in contact with your school while the distance learning is being provided. Another thing that I want to add, if you're attending any CSE or Committee on Special Education meetings during this time, you know, you're still entitled to the interpreter for those meetings as well. So definitely make sure that you are requesting that in advance of the meeting so that it can be prepared for. Um, and same thing if you are getting any updated IEPs or anything at this time, you know, be in communication with the district about having that translated if necessary. And so we just talked about some meetings that would still be taking place. Are committee on special education meetings still occurring during these closures and the distance learning process? They are. However, parents and school districts should be working together to arrange them, not in person at this time, but either through video conferencing or if that's not an available option, perhaps by telephone. And so IEPs, if they need to be modified during the normal school year, there's a process that goes along with that. Do those processes, do they still hold? Can an IEP be modified during distance learning? Uh, yes, an IEP can still be modified during distance learning, though it does not need to necessarily be modified to take into account distance learning that can still go on with the student's IEP that they currently have. Um, but they can be modified now. Parents are still entitled to have a CSE meeting to discuss any proposed changes to a child's IEP. 
That said, you know, again, changes cannot be made to the student's IEP without written parental consent. But given the time that we're in right now as well, you know, a parent and a school district may agree to modify the IEP without a meeting in writing. But again, the school district must have written parental consent before modifying the IEP in that case as well. So let's talk a little bit more about accessibility requirements for distance learning uh, with their instructions and materials. What is required for each district? So if a district is providing materials, if they're written or they're online, students have to really have equal access to it. So they need to still be accessible. But again, that comes with some flexibility. So whether it's a completely accessible document or online resource, or is there an alternative method um, for the student to access it? And so Jennifer, let's talk about standardized tests, whether it's Regents or any of the middle school tests that need to be done. Are students still required to take these during this shutdown? So there has been a suspension of a number of state exams during this time, uh, grades three through eight for ELA and math, grades four and eight for science, grades kindergarten through 12 for the English as a second language achievement test, and the New York State alternate assessment for grades three through 12 have all been suspended. So some students may not want to know the answer to this, but will students be entitled to compensatory education for missed instruction and services? I mean, is there a chance that summer school may become part of the school year this year? So whether that's for all students, I don't know. Um, Specifically for students with special education, um, if they're entitled to compensatory education, that answer really is maybe, right? So this is going to be assessed on an individualized case-by-case determination. Parents should be keeping track of all the services received and missed during this time, but a school cannot simply refuse to provide any special education um, if distance learning is being provided. So remember, though, again, like we talked about before, flexibility is permitted with the services and education where necessary. Um, So it may take time for school district to get set up the distance learning and the parents and districts really need to continue to work together on that. But they may be able to they may be entitled to compensatory education. And so if parents are wondering about compensatory education, is this something that the IEP team will consider or determine as part of this process? Is this where those decisions will be made? Um, Possibly. It's one place that the decisions can be made. Uh, The IEP team, you know, everyone should be working together. So there are some things, let's say, that uh, the team should be considering and determining if compensatory education is appropriate. Um, or even if there needs to be changes to an IEP once a student is back in school. So some of those things can include, you know, did the student receive instruction and related services during the school closure? Were other students receiving instruction, um, including the general education students? Is there accurate documentation of the services that the student did receive? And did the student regress in any skills as a result of the missed education? And so I'm sure that uh, our audience full of parents are going to want to know who can they contact with questions. I'm sure the questions are going to be many and cover many topics. So who can they contact about questions that have to do with distance learning during the pandemic? Parents should first contact their child's school district for questions specific to their child. This could be their child's teacher, principal, the school psychologist, or the special education director. Uh, You can also contact New York State's education department. Uh, General educations can be sent to covid19 at nyced.gov. And we'll have some of this information up on our website for parents to access as, as well. And special education questions can be sent to SPECED at NYSED.gov. Parents can also go to the New York State Education Department's website for current information and guidance. And your child's uh, local school district's website may also have additional contact information or instructions specific to their district, such as staying on top of when school may or may not resume. A lot of districts, uh, as we talked about earlier, are closing almost for two week intervals where other districts are closed for longer periods of time. So definitely, you know, uh, your local school district will also have information. And so along with those resources, if parents can't get their questions answered, is DRNY still a resource that parents can reach out to? Absolutely. Um, You know, we are still up and running while all of this is happening. And depending on the facts of your situation, 
we may be able to provide assistance. So I would just encourage any parents, students, advocates, they can contact our intake department. We will be listing the resources that you gave us in the description of the podcast. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Empire State of Rights closed captioned has been brought to you by Disability Rights New York, your source for disability rights and advocacy. If you enjoyed our program, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this post. If there is a subject you would like us to discuss, please email podcast at drny.org or comment below. Tune in next Wednesday, where we'll bring you more information on disability rights in the state of New York. The closed captioned version of this podcast is available on our YouTube channel. To listen to more Empire State of Rights closed captioned, follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.